because in 2001, the leadership of the SSP broke with the CWI. They left our organisation because they no longer believed it was necessary to build a Marxist organisation and fight for the ideas and the programme of the CWI. And that was proved to have catastrophic consequences for the way in which the SSP developed in the last period. We argued that if the SSP was going to build and be successful, it had to turn to the issues that affect working class communities, of low pay, of opposition to privatisation, of the neoliberal attacks on the working class, on the issues of hospital closures and cuts, and link that to the need for a wholesale transformation in a socialist direction, for a break with capitalism and the building of a socialist planned economy, of linking those issues together. Unfortunately, the leadership of the SSP began to turn away from socialist and class ideas. They promoted as a key campaign the idea that an independent Scotland, Scotland out of Britain, would represent a, a route out of poverty, unemployment, low pay and the neoliberal attacks facing the working class. Now we said, we defend the right of the Scottish people to an independent country, to a referendum and for a democratic decision on their relationship with the rest of Britain. But we will never promote illusions that an independent Scotland based on capitalism offers a route out of poverty and inequality. They argued and they put forward a strategy of launching a pro-independence campaign with the SNP, the Scottish National Party, which is the main bourgeois nationalist party in Scotland. This political bloc of the SSP leaders and the SNP, we argued, would lead to sections of the working class drawing the conclusion that the SSP was no longer putting the interests of the working class to the fore, that the SSP would be seen as losing its cutting edge because it was prepared to enter unprincipled political blocks without explaining the need to fundamentally break with, with capitalism and to build a socialist Scotland. And it was those types of developments alongside the SSP leaders' intention, as they argued, not to fight for a socialist Scotland, but to fight for an alternative model of capitalism. They put forward a prescription, not of a socialist Europe, for example, in the European uh, elections, but of a social Europe. That is capitalism, but with a human face. They began to promote the idea that countries like Denmark, like Sweden, and the Scandinavian model represented a way forward in relation to an alternative to neoliberal capitalism itself. And it was the CWI inside the SSP that tried to fight to keep the SSP on a class basis with a working class orientation and with a clear socialist explanation. But the crisis that engulfed the SSP, the catalyst for the catastrophe and, and the now the, the effective disintegration of the SSP was the way in which the leadership and its linked to their political direction that they moved in the last few years was their decision to demand the resignation of Tommy Sheridan as the leader of the SSP in November 2004. That was over allegations uh, of, by the tabloid media, by the Murdoch media, the news of the world, in relation to Tommy Sheridan's private life. They took a decision immediately that he would have to resign as the leader of the SSP if he was going to go ahead and take a libel case, a defamation case against Murdoch and News International. We said at the time, we have political differences with Tommy Sheridan, who also broke with us in 2001. But let's be clear, the vast majority of working class people in Scotland identified with the SSP through Tommy Sheridan, because when he was a member of our organisation, he was a leading figure in one of the biggest mass movements that to engulf Britain in decades, the anti-poll tax battle, where he was jailed and elected from his prison cell to Glasgow City Council in 1992. Tommy, along with our comrades in the CWI, played a leading role in that movement, and that catapulted him to national prominence, and the working class saw in Tommy Sheridan somebody who would stand up against the establishment, who was prepared to lead a struggle and talk the language of the working class. And for the SSP leaders to remove him as the leader of the SSP on the basis of allegations about somebody's private life, we believed, and have said so publicly, represented a buckling by the SSP leaders because of the threat of bad publicity by the Murdoch media. 
But they'd not, not only stopped there. While he, he stu stood down as the leader of the SSP, an unbelievable campaign of vilification began inside the SSP to justify the actions of the leaders. They, they, they launched a one-sided campaign against Tommy Sheridan in order to justify their actions itself. This led to a situation where they ended up in court in July this year giving evidence for the news of the world against Tommy Sheridan and his defamation action. An action, by the way, that he won to the mass support of the working class in Scotland when the, the, the programmes on Friday afternoon on your television suddenly stopped to go live to the court of session where Tommy Sheridan walked out of the court with his fist clenched to declare victory over the Murdoch Empire and the news of the world. You had the overwhelming majority of the working class on the one side applauding that victory as a victory for ordinary people against the media machine and the lies and slanders of the Murdoch media. And on the other side, you had the SSP leaders who demanded immediately a police investigation, handed over written minutes to the Lothian and Borders Police, demanding that they investigate Tommy Sheridan and that he be charged for perjury, for lying in, in the court. And it was those events that created the catalyst for a split inside the SSP. And there was no option but to launch a new movement for socialism at that stage. Because the leaders of the SSP had dragged the name of socialism through the mud and are continuing to do so. By effectively allowing their uh, attacks on Sheridan to be used in the news of the world and the sun as effectively an in-house journal of the SSP, uh, SSP uh, leaders. The launch of Solidarity therefore represented an attempt to try to rebuild the movement. The SSP was in free fall after Tommy Sheridan's resignation, not just because of his resignation, but because of the political direction that the SSP leaders had taken the party over the last period of time. But in 2005, after Tommy Sheridan resigned as leader, the SSP vote in the general election collapsed by over 40% compared to 2001. The votes in the by-elections and the parliamentary elections showed that the SSP vote was falling by between 40 and 60% even before the court case. It could have and should have been possible to ensure that Tommy Sheridan's victory, which we said was a victory for the left and was a victory for socialists across the globe because of the role that the Murdoch media plays against the working class and any, by the way, any trade unionist, any socialist who stands up to be counted, to lead a movement and a struggle, is targeted by that organisation. During the 1984 miners' strike, the Sun described the, the strike in British miners as scum. During the firefighters' dispute three years ago in Britain, the firefighters were called Saddam's stooges because it's the British Army who to drive the fire engines to put out the fires when the firefighters went on strike, and it was the beginning of the Iraq war. During the Hillsborough disaster, the Liverpool fans were accused by the sun of urinating on the dead bodies and pickpocketing dead bodies as, as they lay dying in the Hillsborough end in Sheffield. And it's those types of methods that, unfortunately, the leaders of the SSP have been collaborating with against Tommy Sheridan and, we think, against the interests of the socialist movement itself. So it's from that point of view that we had no choice now but to relaunch and rebuild the socialist movement in Scotland on a principal basis. And the CWI in Scotland are committed to try to ensure that the mistakes of the SSP are not repeated in this new formation. We want to ensure that this organisation Solidarity takes up the issues that face working class communities of low pay, privatisation, of fighting for public ownership as, a, as an alternative to privatisation and supporting working class people in struggle. On that basis, we think it will be possible to build a powerful socialist force in, in the next period. And the reality is there is no alternative for working class people but to take the road of struggle and to the road of socialism. George Bush, finish on this point, made admitted 48 hours ago that Iraq was now Vietnam. That as far as he was concerned, the last period in Iraq is now the equivalent of the Tet Offensive in Vietnam in 1968 and 69, which was a turning point in what was clearly then became a defeat for US imperialism. 
They are desperate to try and get themselves out of the Iraq quagmire. But they have no alternative policy. And we are still going to see a defeat for US and British imperialism inside Iraq. That, is their, that, that will have a major effect in relation to the outlook and the consciousness of a whole generation who can draw socialist and Marxist conclusions as a result of these events. And, of course, the unremitting, unending attacks of capitalism in its neoliberal phase against the rights and the conditions of the working class. Our role in the CWI is to fight to ensure that the working class can be organised and fight in trade unions to resist these attacks and to build new parties of the working class of a socialist character, of a mass character, to turn the tide against neoliberal attacks, against capitalism and for a socialist future. Thank you.